Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to get Genshin Impact 3.0 working on the new version of Play Cover. So quite a lot has happened since I made my last tutorial video about this. Unfortunately, the main developer iVoider has left the project, but on the upside, Play Cover has now become open source and has been picked up by the community with renewed interest. So sideloading on the Mac has never been in a better position. And this video is going to give you all of the up-to-date instructions on getting games like Genshin Impact and Diablo Immortal working on Apple Silicon hardware. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So if at any point you run into difficulty make sure to check out the docs.playcover.io. This is going to be fully up to date with all of the latest instructions and any workarounds that are required to install the latest version of Playcover. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to the Playcover GitHub page. So this is the open source community fork of Playcover. Then we're going to go down to releases here and now we're going to select the latest release. So the latest at the time recording is 1.1.1 one and this includes a hotfix. So what I'm going to do is to scroll down to the bottom of the page and then click on play cover 1.1.1.dmg. So if you're watching this in the future you might have a different version of play cover. Normally the latest version is going to be fine. So once that's downloaded we're going to go to finder here and then we're going to click on downloads and then we're going to find our play cover.dmg which I'm going to double click on. We have the new icon for play cover here. What we're going to do is to drag and drop this into the applications folder. So within finder we're going to go to applications and I'm going to scroll down until we find play cover. Now we're going to double click and it's asking us whether we're sure we want to open it we're going to press open so here it's telling us that we need to install xcode command line tools and then restart play cover so i'm going to press install here then we want to type in the local password to the computer press ok and now it's going to download and install xcode command line tools this can take a bit of time it's actually a few gigabytes in size once it's ready we're going to press close if you have an issue with this what you can do is go to the top right hand side of the screen here type in the word terminal and then select the top option here and then we can type in the command xcode dash select space dash dash install and then press return now it's prompting us to install this manually. Press install and agree. So if you're having issues with installing Xcode command line tools, if the application isn't managing to download this, then this might fail for the same reason. So you're going to have to use this method here where we download the install package from the Apple developer website. So all you need to do is to go to the Apple developer website, which I'll leave a link to in the description, which is developer.apple.com. And then we go ahead and sign in with our Apple ID and sign up to the developer program. You don't need to pay the $100 fee. You just need to sign up and you'll be able to access the Xcode command online tools download. You should be able to use the free version of this software. Then you're going to follow the link to developer.apple.com and then we're going to download the latest version of command line tools. So I'm going to be using Xcode 14 beta 5. So once that's finished downloading, just double click on command line tools and then double click on the package file. Continue agree, install, type in your password. So once that's done, we'll press close, keep the file, and then we're going to open up Play Cover again. So now we've got Play Cover version 1.1.1 installed, and we're now ready to move on to the next step to add an app. So we need to be using decrypted IPA files. So there are a few ways to go ahead and find this. The one that's going to yield the fastest results is to join the Play Cover Discord. So this is a different link from the one that I published before on previous videos. You can also find this link on docs.playcover.io or the top of the Play Cover io website within the announcements channel here there's going to be a link to another discord server here called apocalypse and this is going to be the place where members of the community are going to be decrypting ipa files so we're going to join the server so today we're going to do a search for genshin we're going to find the latest versions of genshin impact i'm going to click on this one genshin impact 3.0 link 9 press yes and i'm going to download a copy of this ipa press allow and let that start that download process. So Genshin Impact 3.0 is 3.17 gigabytes. So this might take a bit of time to complete. So there are other sources listed in the documentation. There are also external websites as well. So just be careful if you're downloading software from third parties, it's very much buyer beware. Just be careful of what you're downloading. The safest thing to do is to actually decrypt the mobile application yourself using a jailbroken device. If you want to find out how to do this, I'll leave a link to my tutorial video. So once our IPA file has downloaded, what we're going to do is to add it to Play Cover. So here we're going to open up play cover and then click add app then we're going to go to downloads and we're going to open up our Genshin Impact IPA and press open and then this is going to start the installation process it's also going to install something called play tools so now that Genshin Impact is installed we can move on to the next step specific to Genshin Impact we have to disable what's called system integrity protection or SIP and this is a temporary measure so we can re-enable it afterwards the computer will remain secure in the long term so here we're going to close this down and then we're going to go to the Apple logo here and then press shut down so once your Mac has turned off what we're going to do is to enter recovery mode so I'm going to hold down the power button on the top right hand side of your Mac and I'll hold this until 
we go into the recovery menu. So it says here, continue holding for startup options. Just wait for that to complete. Now it's saying load up startup options. So once we're here, we're gonna press the options button here and then continue. So now that we're in the recovery menu, we're gonna to go to utilities and then terminal. And then in this terminal utility, we're going to type in CSR util disable and then press return. Here it's asking us to confirm that we're modifying the security of this computer. Type in Y and then return. Type in the password for your user. If you don't see anything appear here, don't worry, that's a security protection. As long as you typed your password and press return, it's going to continue to the next stage. So now that SIP has been turned off, we can now reboot the machine by clicking on the Apple logo and press restart. So now that we've logged in again, we're going to open up the documentation. So the next step asks us to modify the NVRAM boot arguments. So in my experience, this isn't always necessary, but it's quite easy to do. All you have to do is to go to the spotlight, type in terminal, go to terminal again, and then we need to copy and paste this line. So control click here, press copy, and then control click on the space and press paste, and then press return. Type in the password and press return, and then we need to restart the Mac. So now we've restarted again, what we're going to do is to open up Play Cover and now we're ready to launch Genshin Impact. So I'm going to open this now and double click. And now you can see that Genshin Impact has now started to launch. Just close this notification. And then what we need to do here is to log in with our username and password. Make sure to enter the code for security verification, agree to the terms and conditions and press accept. And before we move on to this next step, it's very important that you do not click on the door and try to move on to the login process because we need to re-enable SIP in order for this to work. Just press accept and then don't press anything else. It's okay here to select your server. So once we get to here, what we're gonna do is to close down Genshin Impact, and then we're gonna restart the process of enabling SIP. So just go ahead and shut down. So now we're gonna re-enable system integrity protection by going into recovery again. So just hold down the power button, continue holding for startup options, loading startup options, and then you can let go. Then we go to options here and press continue. Then we go back to utilities, open up terminal, and this time we're gonna type in CSR util enable. So space there, press return, press Y and then return. Type in your admin password, press return. So system integrity protection is turned on. Now we're gonna restart the Mac. So now that we're back in the Mac again, we're gonna open up play cover and then we're going to open up Genshin Impact. And now that system integrity protection is turned on, we're now free to go ahead and log into the game. This has started to download resources and it's all working now. So now that the resources have downloaded, we're going to tap to begin and go into the door. Here we're going to download the rest of the data. So just let that complete. So now we're in the game and we're now able to play. So one of the first things we're going to do is to change some of the settings. One thing I definitely recommend doing is changing the frame rate to 60 FPS. The other thing is that if you have a controller, you can definitely play with a controller just paired to the Bluetooth side on the Mac and then in a control type, switch it to controller. However, one thing that you should try out is the key mapping. So I'm just going to show you how to do that now. So within the game, it's possible to set your own key mapping. So what you do to toggle that is press command K and what you can do is to click on part of the screen and then you can add some kind of mapping onto it. So for example, here we can map movement. And if I press command K again, then that key mapping has been saved. And if you press WASD, then movement is enabled. And if I press Command K again, then you can basically add these little key mapping zones on any part of the screen and customize it as you like. However, one thing that you can do is to enable one of the community key maps so you don't have to do this yourself. So within the Play Cover Discord, there is a key mapping channel. And what you can do is do a search for Genshin Impact key mapping. So for example, for Genshin Impact, we can find the link here for Genshin key mapping. And this is a .playmap file, which has been downloaded here. So what we can do now is go back to Play Cover and then find the app we're gonna import the key mapping to and then control click and then click import key mapping. And we can find the file that we just downloaded, press open. So what we're going to do now is to close Genshin Impact and reload it. Also another tip is that if your mouse cursor is locked in the window, just press Command and Option and you'll be able to select the top left hand buttons. Now we're going to reopen Genshin Impact. So now you can see that key mapping has been enabled. I've got space for jump and I've got WASD keys here. If you want to see the new layout, you press Command K and you can see that the entire screen has been pre-filled with all of the different shortcuts that you might need. So for example, I can easily switch between the different characters and I can jump and uh, I can use the shift key to toggle running and that's all working as normal. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. The world of play cover and side loading on Apple Silicon Macs changes very frequently. So if you're watching this far in the future, I definitely recommend checking out the up-to-date documentation on the play cover website for up-to-date instructions. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.